Have y'all ever heard of the Proverbs 31 woman? If you are a believer, I'm sure you have heard of the Proverbs 31 woman. I'm sure you've heard her spoken of, her preached about, her studied, and it is a very popular passage. And as I was scrolling on TikTok, there was this video that really sparked my attention. And it was a video saying how the Proverbs 31 woman has become an idol. And she was just describing why it's become an idol and why we should just focus on Jesus. And as I looked in the comments to really, I wanted to see the feedback, I saw a lot of people were agreeing with her, unfortunately. And so I just wanted to really combat that video and really give another perspective. As a wife, I really resonate with the Proverbs 31 woman. And that is something that the Holy Spirit has been teaching me about and showing me how I can be that woman in my everyday life. And so let's just dig into the scripture first. And if you guys see me looking over here, I'm just looking at my notes. And so in this passage, King Lemuel, if I'm saying that right, King Lemuel's mother was speaking to him and giving him advice. And not many people know who King Lemuel is, but just do some research. Lemuel really means belongs to God. And it could really be um, a nickname for King Solomon. But anyway, so his mother was really giving him instruction. And later on, this instruction and her words were used as a poem. And so in this passage, she's warning him to stay away from, she's warning him to stay away from certain women. And in Proverbs 5, actually, she says, my son, pay attention to my wisdom. Listen carefully to wise count to my wise counsel. Then you then you will show discernment and your lips will express what you've learned. She says, stay away from the woman whose lips are immoral and they're sweet as honey. She also says that that woman is bitter as poison and she is as she is as dangerous as a double edged sword. And we understand from this context and from different parts of the chapter that this mother is giving advice to her son. It's not just a poem. It is clear instruction. That's why it found its way in the Bible because 2 Timothy says all scripture is God breathed and useful and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. And so this is what this scripture in this passage is being used as for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training and righteousness. And not only that, the Proverbs 31 woman, she is the standard. It's not exactly what she's doing, every single thing that she's doing. It's the principles behind what she is doing. And I think the problem is a lot of women, they read this passage and they examine themselves and they say, hey, this is not something that I match up to. This is not something that I'm even close to. So therefore I'm going to shy away from it. And I feel condemned. That is not what the scripture is supposed to do. I think we just really need to look at it differently. And so, and I understand while it is true that many things of, that many things can become an idol, the things of God can become an idol. Striving to become the standard that God has set for his daughters is not one of them. And I find it funny that when we have a hard time reaching something, we give ourselves an excuse and we pardon ourselves. Guys, that's not what we're supposed to do. Why don't we go in prayer and ask God, what is this? Why can't I, why do I feel condemned when I read this? Why do I feel like I can never reach this standard or reach what this woman has done or what she does in her daily life? Why completely shy away from it? So I want to ask us, is not being like Jesus a challenge every day? It's a challenge. Why don't we just dismiss that as being an idol? Being like Jesus. Oh, I can never be like Jesus. I can never forgive my enemies. I can never turn the other cheek. I can never love my enemies. I can never I can never overcome offense. I can never forgive 70 times 7. I can never do all of these things. I'm just going to dismiss that as an idol. Why don't we do that? The thing is, we should strive to be like Christ in every single way. And if you can't see Christ in the Proverbs 31 woman, you are really missing the point. The Proverbs 31 woman, she is valued by God. It says in the scripture that she is the crown of her husband. Why wouldn't she want to be that? Because the opposite is, is a woman who brings him shame with her foolishness and is like rottenness in her bones. The Proverbs 31 woman, she's also a very hardworking woman. She's a diligent woman. She's a disciplined woman. She opens up her arms to the poor. And we know the Bible and we know the scripture says that lending to the poor is like lending to God. Why wouldn't she want to be that? She also sets provisions for her household. She sets provisions for her husband, her children, and her servants. Why wouldn't you want to be that? 
The opposite of that is lazy and a sluggard. And the, and the book of Proverbs mentions being lazy and a sluggard multiple times. Also, if Christ is the husband man and we are his bride, what is the standard for the bride? You guys, we just have to start asking ourselves these questions. And I'm sure if Christ was here today and we asked him, what is the standard for your bride? He'd say, go to my word. And in my word, what do we find? The Proverbs 31 woman. <laughs> As someone who went on their own journey to preparing to be a wife, the first thing that the Holy Spirit instructed me to do was to start getting up early in the morning and praying and dedicating that time to Him. I started at 6 a.m. and I stayed at 6 a.m. until I got stronger. Then it moved to, I'm sorry, I started at 6.30 and then it moved to 6 a.m. Then it moved to 5.30. Then it moved to 5. Now I'm currently at 4.30 and I wake up at 4.30 and I pray and that is the time that I dedicate to the Father. That's the time that I pray. That is the time that I meditate. That is the time that I seek instruction for the day, seek instruction for just anything that God has wanted to give to me. And many people may not understand the principle or the importance of getting up early, but maybe you should probably go and study the prayer watches. That would give you a better context and an, under, and an understanding of why you should get up at certain times. But also rising up early and giving God your first fruits of the day is very important. And not only that, there are many instances in the Bible where people rose up early in the morning and began to pray. The book of Samuel, Hannah, um, who was praying and tearing for a child it says that she would rise up in the early morning and she would also pray at night as well psalms 119 and 47 says i rise before the dawning of the morning and cry for help and i hope in your word there's a principle in rising up in the morning not only that when the disciples saw jesus walking on water that was the early watch that was the early morning jesus was praying in the early morning guys so there's a principle in waking up early in the morning i'm actually Actually just convinced at this point that y'all just love sleep and don't want to wake up but honestly I found myself more effective as a daughter of God and as a wife when I really just began to rise up early in the morning because I can get my time with God without being interrupted by any of my tasks any of my responsibilities work anything like that I can set myself up for success and to be effective throughout my day if I first focus on God and if I have that intimate time in prayer listen guys I understand that reading the Proverbs 31 woman, it may be intimidating, but God has never given us anything for it to intimidate us and for us to shy away from it. Listen, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Not only that, let me tell y'all my story. Last year, my husband was just talking to me and telling me all the things that we needed to do, the things that he needed to do, I needed to do, and just all of that. And after we finished talking, I honestly felt overwhelmed because I'm like, okay, Lord, you've called me to do this. You've called me to do this. I feel like I have so many talents, but I feel overwhelmed with them. And I've actually taken up gardening. And so as I was thinking and just meditating and, and talking with the Lord, I was gardening at this time. I was planting some seeds and the Holy Spirit said this to me. He said, I've graced you to do this. This is something that you shouldn't shy away from because I built you for this. And when he told me that, it completely changed my perspective. I want you women who are striving to be like Christ and who are striving to be an excellent daughter to understand that this is something that he has built you for, your grace to do this. And when your grace to do something, it becomes easy. That's why when you hear people say things like, wow, you make, you make whatever you do look easy, or if I was doing what you were doing, or if I had to do all the things that you do, I don't know, I would be somewhere stressed. It's because you've been graced to do this. Don't look at the Proverbs 31 woman as all of the things that I have to do and it's a checklist. No, this is the type of woman that you become when you surrender yourself to Christ. This is the type of woman that you become when you become a daughter of God and when you understand your position in the kingdom. This is who you become as a woman of value, as a woman of honor, as a wife of noble character, as a woman who builds her home the spirit has begun strategically convicting me when I do certain things he'll say if you do this is this building your home or is this tearing it down and that's coming from the scripture Proverbs 14 and 1 the wise woman builds her house but with her own hands the foolish one or the foolish woman tears it down this is how the Holy Spirit has convicting me, has been convicting me this is how he's been training me and this is how he's been bringing me up even though looking at the Proverbs 31 woman 
when they feel intimidating. Being like Christ can feel intimidating if you don't look at it in the right lens, because who can truly be like Christ without God? That's why Jesus says in Luke chapter 18, he says, the, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And so I would have to argue that you're probably looking at the Proverbs 31 woman in your own strength. The reason why you're looking at it as this is something I can't do. This is something that I've never done. How can I do all of this? That's the wrong question to ask yourself. You should ask yourself, God, how are you going to help me do this? Because with God, all things are possible. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Please don't just allow anyone to come and validate your insecurities, validate your weaknesses, and allow you to stay in that weakened state and to allow you to be content with who you are right now. No, being like Christ challenges us every day. And the Proverbs 31 challenges us as well. Why? Because we can see Christ within her as well. And so it's supposed to challenge us, but we're not supposed to back down from the challenge. We're supposed to rise to the occasion because we have the spirit of Christ within us and we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us. And so guys, you are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. You are more than a champion. You are already victorious. Remember that do not shy away from anything that God has called us to. This is in his word for a reason, y'all. If this is something that you feel like the Holy Spirit is challenging you or putting in front of you as saying, hey, I've created you for more. I created you to be honorable. I created you to be a wonderful wife and an excellent daughter. Do not shy away from it, but begin to pull on the strength of God and you will find yourself doing things that you never thought you would do before. Remember guys to like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified for future videos. And thank you so much for tuning in.